We're going to talk about one particular um, characteristic of a plasma, which is its response to a perturbation, um, and we'll find that that is an oscillatory response. Um, so plasmas are, are important um, materials that are important states of matter, uh, and they're characterised... Perturbation, I've got that wrong. Uh, they're characterised by um, typically an electron density, um, in E, but notice that this is a number density. Um, and we're assuming that we have a homogeneous uniform system where you've got an electron gas with a number density Ne that's counteracted by some kind of background of slow, heavy-moving ions with a total charge that's the same as the total charge of the electrons. The electrons are free to move um, relative to those um, the ions. <laughs> So we're going to imagine what happens to a, a slab of plasma here, um, and we're going to ask the question, what happens if we displace the electrons relative to the ions just by a little bit? So I'm going to draw the displaced electron slab there. That displacement we are going to label as X, um, and of course, by displacing the electrons, we'll have a negative charge on one side and we'll have a positive charge on the other. <laughs> Um, just thinking about dielectrics, we could write something like p dot n is equal to sigma, so the polarization um, is equal to the, char the surface charge density, um, and the surface charge density is easily turned to be given by q n e times the magnitude of x. Um, that just gives us a charge density, and therefore the polarization p must equal q n e x. We can then consider what happens to the electric displacement. Um, which we define as epsilon naught e plus p, um, which is equal to zero because there's no free charge, um, and therefore e, the electric field associated with the polarization, is minus p over epsilon naught. Um, and when we now come to think about the force on the system, there will of course be a restoring force um, pushing the electrons back, um, and we write f is equal to qe, which is equal to minus q squared ne x um, over epsilon naught. <laughs> if you're worried about the signs, um, just think about the physics of the situation, exactly what is happening here. When we displace the electrons, we're going to have a restoring force, we're going to have a, a polarisation that pushes them back towards where they were before. Um, now, of course, we can, we can substitute for um, f to write m d2x by dt squared um, is equal to minus q squared n e over epsilon naught x. And at this point, you should be jumping up and down and saying it's a simple harmonic oscillator um, because this kind of an equation ought to be something you recognize immediately. Um, we know how to solve the simple harmonic oscillator. It gives us, as the name suggests, an oscillation. Um, and so we typically write d2x by dt squared is equal to minus omega naught squared x, where omega naught, which we actually call here omega p, because it's the plasma frequency, is the square root of q squared ne over epsilon naught m. And that is the plasma frequency. So that's a simple phenomenological derivation um, which tells us about the response of a plasma to an oscillation. Um, to a, sorry, not to an oscillation, to a perturbation. The response of the plasma is an oscillation. Um, it's an important thing to understand um, because this, this characterizes some of the behavior of plasmas. Um, you do get similar behavior in metals, but you have to be very careful to understand that a conductor and a plasma are not entirely the same things. Um, it's also worth noting that we have ignored the effects of dissipation. Um, and you know, if you had a very large applied driving field, which is at the plasma frequency, um, a simple harmonic oscillator, which is driven at its resonant frequency, technically gives you an infinite um, response in terms of the amplitude of the oscillations if you drive it for long enough. That, of course, is completely unphysical, and so dissipation effects tend to come in. For the plasma, it will be things like collisions, either with other electrons or with the ions, and ultimately there will be further ionization and we will have electric fields which are large enough to remove extra electrons from the ions. That will dissipate energy. It will also change the number density of the plasma um, and therefore change the, the resonant frequency. In the next video, um, we will consider 
what happens in terms of dispersion. So therefore the response of a plasma to electromagnetic waves um, of specific frequencies and how the frequency relates to the wave number. Um, that's a slightly different problem um, and, and it opens up all sorts of interesting problems. But this has been just a simple demonstration of why plasmas tend to respond with an oscillation to perturbation.